if you've got gut symptoms and brain symptoms and muscle and joints and you're fatigued and you've got skin problems, well, that's starting to sound like it. Right. <laughs> that's much more likely to be CRS because inflammation in like the whole body inflammation process like this generally involves multiple systems. So the, the symptoms can involve any body symptom, uh, body system rather. And some of the really common ones are fatigue, anxiety, super common, uh, insomnia. That's really, really common. Uh, you just find you just can't sleep and um, there's a lot of sleep disturbance that happens. Pain in the body. So that can be in the muscles, can be in the joints, it can be in both. That's very, very common. Uh, you can get headaches, a certain amount of headaches that can be due, particularly to, there's a dehydration that also happens in CIRS due to the fact that one of the hormones, which usually regulates the amount of fluid in the body, becomes low, which is called ADH. And so that on its own can cause headaches. You can also get swelling in the brain. Uh, due to CRS, which can cause headaches. So that's definitely one. And then gut symptoms, that's definitely part of it. Uh, so you can get, you know, diarrhea, constipation, bloating. One of the reasons for that is that it's common to get SIBO uh, or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth in concert with CRS. You're basically getting neuroinflammation. Um, you're gaining what we call microglial activation. Now, what we mean by that is the immune system, the immune cells of the brain are becoming activated. They often create uh, a compound called NMDA, and that's causing inflammation in the nerve cells. Now, a test that we often use to look at this is called NeuroQuant. Now, NeuroQuant is a computerized analysis of brain MRI. Uh, it's performed in, in by Cortex Labs in San Diego. But you, there's certain... Uh, imaging companies all around the world, actually, who are able to perform an MRI and send it off for neuroquant analysis. Now, what we see in people who have severe CIRS is that they've got a whole range of different brain areas, which are either shrunken or enlarged. So we call it atrophy is the mm -hmm. technical term for shrinkage and hypertrophy, technical term for enlargement. And so... Really what that is showing is neuroinflammation. That's showing that the, the, the brain has become inflamed in some way. And in some cases, that's actually led to, to an atrophy. And that can be, as I say, it can be very severe and it can go all the way through to dementia. In other cases, people can have very severe cognitive defects, like things like I've seen people who are unable to take in information at all. They can't, you know not remember people's faces at all. It could be their expression of information is, is greatly affected. If they develop enough inflammation of the white matter, which is basically the myelin sheaths around the nerves, well, that's multiple sclerosis right, right. there. If it's more to do with uh, the basal ganglia area of the brain, if that neuroinflammation gets bad enough, there's enough atrophy, well, that's Parkinson's waiting to happen. So there are a lot of different uh, a lot of different diseases which can be um, can be related to to mold exposure, especially if there's a genetic susceptibility or another factor involved that can push the person down that path. Many patients with with CIRS are multiple chemical sensitive as well, and they certainly can be electro hypersensitive in some cases. It's basically just looking at how multi system is your illness. So for instance, if your condition is only involves bloating and diarrhea, that's only one system. Yeah. If it if it only involves insomnia and let's say um, a little bit of anxiety, that's only one system. If it only involves joint and muscle pains, that's only one system. But if you've got all of those, if you've got, you know, if you've got gut symptoms and brain symptoms and muscle and joints and you're fatigued and you've got skin problems, well, that's starting to sound like it. Right. <laughs> that's much more likely to be CRS because inflammation in like the whole body inflammation process like this generally involves multiple systems. And eventually it may end up with someone being literally bed bound, right? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. I've seen people who essentially cannot even get up for a shower right. uh, or, or virtually do anything. And I've had actually seen someone have a cardiac arrest due to mold. So it can get very, very bad. Wow. And you can get you can get Alzheimer's 
disease due to to mold definitely probably other neurodegenerative conditions so i do believe in some cases it can become life threatening can be very very severe is is that correct in saying that this condition or this wider umbrella of cirs can basically look like from a clinical perspective or diagnostic perspective it can tick many of the boxes for other conditions and people are often missed because they get given these diagnoses um yeah is is that correct yeah, absolutely. Like they'll often meet the, they'll often meet the diagnostic criteria for chronic fatigue syndrome, uh, or fibromyalgia. And so, if CIRS or mold illness is not in your uh, diagnostic umbrella, then they're probably the best, the best diagnoses you know you you can find for that situation. But the problem is they don't, they don't give you any idea of the cause. 